February 16, 1 14 pm. District Court. Defendant Lemmy number 4. Mr. Falls, I. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You were good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime. Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we got to get past. An obstacle? I mean, yeah. We did talk about the possibility that uh, Melissa was the one that was on the bridge and not Valerie and all that. But not only do I feel like we're gonna be discussing about the, the thing that happened years ago, but we don't really have a motive for that, that's for sure. We're gonna find that motive for sure, because I know that there is a connection between Melissa and uh, Valerie Hawthorne. Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that police woman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, I still badly need information. Information? Alright. What we need the most info is about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. But what is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. Oh boy! Talking about a murder or the incident that happened years ago, and me not knowing any single information about that. You know how I enjoyed those ones! <laughs> the kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing! I didn't kill nobody! I never lie! Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. That day, five years ago, I dream of it. Every day. This picture, it reminds me of everything. Bridge looks same, just like then, five years ago. Like you could fall apart. Fall apart any minute. So it's broken like that for at least five years. Hmm. Huh. Sorry, buddy. But you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It's true. I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. Your girlfriend? Y your girlfriend? Huh? Hey, how long there? Did it say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Yeah. There's your connection, that's for sure. But what I'm most interested in is the fact that Dahlia over here is... I mean, Falls is seeing Dahlia as his girlfriend. Well, definitely not my first rodeo. Dahlia hoped for. Very Valerie's little sister. What? Are you serious? Little oh, sister? The girl. Let her go. Shut up. Come closer. And I'll kill her. Sorry. But you're not going to get the chance. The detective back then was very helpful. At first I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but... If it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Hmm. Wrong. No protect sister. Valerie betray me. Betray us! Well, what do you mean, she betrayed you? Does this have to do with uh, what you did right now? Everything. All lies. All make-believe. Kidnapping too. Make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia. My girlfriend. My love. My teen angel. Ugh. Did he actually say my teen angel? 
he's seen one too many soap operas. Yeah, I guess Dahlia has that kind of effect on people. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says? Uh, hold on a minute. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah. Me and Dahlia. And Valerie too. Valerie was in on it? Huh. Well, I guess it could go... Two ways. Either this Valerie truly was on in on it with Dahlia for some reason. I don't know what the reason that is, but nonetheless, maybe Valerie is just as evil as Dahlia. That or Valerie was going along with it, but in the end tried to protect Dahlia and, you know, get her out of this mess, whatever mess they were in, because, well... She was part of the law and all that sort of stuff. Maybe she was, maybe Valerie was a good person, so... She was kind of a spy of some sorts, trying to get them on the, on the run or something like that. Dahlia's family rich. Jewelry business. And we get one jewel. That's what we fought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We sent to her dead. Ask for two million dollar diamond. Tell him make exchange on Dusky Bridge. Two million dollar diamond? Man, that is one expensive diamond, must say. One expensive iridium. We told him very make transfer because she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, alright. In the end, you were planning on splitting that two million free ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman. That woman, tell her, she'd do it for real. She should be at for real. Me and Dahlia. I was shot in arm. Dahlia. She jumped in river. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Woke up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. And that man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into a roaring river 40 feet below. In these five years, all I wonder is why? 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 Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. Well, no doubt we're gonna figure it out in this trial, folks. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. I mean, hmm. Yes, but I forget what she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. J just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear her answer come from her mouth. That's all. So that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, Zebra Boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Foles, where is it? Huh? Where's what? The diamond? Come on now, kid. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did he give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. You, you don't know? Huh? You don't know? No, really. I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. Eh, <sighs> I see. Well, that would be a reason for why she jumped on purpose into the river. To escape from it all. With Dahlia? Yeah, I guess so. 
No wonder she didn't want to reveal her true name. Not only would this connect to the case, but maybe she's using this name as, you know, as her new name to escape from her old life. Because if people were to find out that she's Dahlia, then people are going to go back to, the, to that case. That day, on the bridge, Dahlia put it in a backpack. Now gone, with Dahlia, gone forever, into Eagle River. It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now. We're about ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Halfhorn? Never found her, my sweet Dahlia. They never found her. Yeah. But chances are we're gonna find her in this child. Soil by River. Gone. Dahlia. My teen angel. Your teen angel. How old was she anyway? Just 14. Eh, that does fit. 14? I guess you were robbing cradles before diamonds. Also... Uh, how old do you, are you? Um... Sir? 25. And... You, you had Dahlia as a girlfriend when she was 14? Okay. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth 2 mil. I'm not even gonna pursue that topic any further, like, whatsoever. I I'm not. And oh man. Angels these days. Faust takes the fall and gets a one way ticket to Death Row. Is Dahlia half one an angel? Or is she really. It's time, kitten. It looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet! Alright, a $2 million gem, used as ransom for Dahlia, lost to Eagle River 5 years ago. Hmm. Okay. I can actually see this. I mean, Valerie would truly know everything about Dahlia. So I guess we found out... Yeah, I can definitely see the motive for uh, killing Valerie, that's for sure. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You gotta strike while the iron is shot. Truly. I mean, there is a reason why Valerie was killed. More than likely by uh, Dahlia at this point. For one particular mouth to be kept shut, so to speak. That's one of my rules. Remember it. February 16, 1.49 p.m. In district court. Court number four. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Y yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best. Hmm. You're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand the defense lawyer wanted to get her client off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is. Okay, what the hell are you talking about now? Are you, are you really going there? My witness is not the person on trial here. She is an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. And that's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Eh, well, we're, figure, we're gonna figure that out soon enough, hey, G-boy? Hmm. It's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. So basically try to establish the motive. Okay, I, I'm gonna accept that challenge. Her motive, huh? I figure that's what I have to establish next. Well, let's say, do you have any evidence of some motive? Do you have any evidence of a motive? Uh, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, I think. 
Huh. He is still acting as tame as a kitten. Kitten. Mr. Armando. Listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Huh. Interesting. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grimming at me like that. Huh. Um, excuse me. May I speak, Mr. Judge? Oh, of course. Mr. Judge is ready. Mr. Judge is ready anytime you like. I like. I like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why. I. I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know it that it's not true. Hmm. I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. Perhaps like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smell. Just when things are darkest for her, click. She lights you right up. Hey, well then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. Alright. More cross examining. And this time we're gonna talk about Melissa Foster's history. I, I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And I simply don't have any reason for wanting to hire the police officer. I'll get grudge in killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. A kidnapped and poor girl. I just think that defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm. Out of the country, eh? Yeah, of course you're gonna you're gonna talk about Terry Falls as if he is a monster. The one person that he thinks that you are a teen angel, or something along the lines of that. Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm. Indeed. You're up to that, kitten. Sharpen those clothes and put on your best smile. Y you bet. Somehow, I have to tie her to this case. Somehow, somehow. I wonder how. I I was out of the country until the year before last. So, what country were you living in then? We were all living abroad. After my parents were killed. It was a brutal civil war. She had to try to make her way back home alone. I... I lost everything. I didn't even have any personal identification. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, back up, back it up, beep, beep. Did you guys, did you guys talk, are you guys talking about a civil war? What's that all about? What kind of sub story is this? I don't know, but it kind of feels real. Like, is anybody gonna tell me about this civil war? I'm more interested in that. What do I do? Should I press her for more details? Yeah, sure. Witness, answer my question. I even repeat it for you. What country were you in? Yeah, because he didn't even tell us what country you were in. You just tell us. You just told us that you were abroad. I mean, in more ways than one, that she is abroad. <laughs> Your Honor, this line of questioning is childish. What country she was in, and how many languages she may speak are irrelevant here. They may seem irrelevant, yeah, but what reason would she have for hiding it in the first place? What we're here to evaluate is whether this witness has any connection to this case. Ah, whatever. You know, I really have to question this kind of tactic that prosecutors have, like, would this, would this, this have any relevance to this case? Well, I mean, how much is it gonna last for her to answer that kind of question? 10 seconds, and then we move on to the real important stuff that we're gonna have to discuss. So, what the hell? It is because you, Edgeworth, are starting to object and tell us about this sort of stuff that it lasts more than 10 seconds. Therefore, you are wasting our time. And I am wasting everyone's time by even talking about this in the first place. So thanks, Edgeworth! I've lived abroad ever since I was a little girl. That's why I could never have known Mr. Falls or Detective Hawthorne. But, okay, I guess so. I guess uh, since she's not even gonna tell us where, which country she was in, because 
some people were are going to investigate her in the first place, like maybe where she was. And that's not what Dahlia wants. Yes, I think we established that point. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed we do. Well, shall we add what you just stated to the official testimony? Yes, please, Mr. Judge. Naturally, I didn't know he... I didn't know either the victim or the defendant. Wait, did he actually say add to the testimony? Hmm. Okay. He didn't know either person? Are you certain of that? Yes. I'm afraid I'm really shy around people. Hmm. Oh well. That cannot be hoped. Why is he just agreeing with everything that comes out of her mouth? Uh <sighs> I've okay. I was gonna go back to that topic that I that I that I mentioned before that I wasn't gonna gonna go deeper into, like especially if. Nah, let's just ignore this. And the first time you saw Yudoro then was when they were on bridge, correct? Because at least Dahlia at this point, I'm sorry, Melissa at this point is like 19, right? Yes, it really was a coincidence. Until I entered college, I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. I mean, even if she's 19, I... <laughs> so, what made you decide to go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just like being outdoors. Picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. You don't look like much of a hiker to me. But you do look like a digger of sorts. Oh! Man! Okay, you, you, you are thinking that, Mia, but I cannot wait for you to say it out loud to her. What kind of digger she is. Bega Mountain is a two-hour drive from here, and no, no trains run through, through there. Yeah, I just... Like, she has to say that when uh, we're gonna find the contradiction in her testimony. Especially when we're gonna be talking about the diamond. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went there once with the college hiking club. I fell in love with its dark, deathly beauty, and it's called yet romantic gloominess. You know, you are such a goth. <laughs> goth Dahlia, hmm. By the way, what's the name of your college? Objection! The prosecution object to any question that involved the witness's private life. All that matters is that she is a material witness to a crime. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. The witness doesn't need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious in intent. Thank you. She's really gone too far. Hmm. This way, you're treating on thin ice here. Yeah, yeah. I hardly said anything. Jeez, talk about sensitive. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Perhaps. But your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. Well, th that's... Objection! Don't you point that finger at me, Edorf. I, I said before, I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat that finger of yours if you're gonna keep doing that. Unfortunately, Miss Faye, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station and wants to identify the sus. It's entirely possible that, at that time, an officer showed her this photo. Eh, uh, I guess so. Hmm, that sounds like a rather serious mistake. Huh? That's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. That, that's not fair! Very wicked inmate. I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. Only a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He's trying to forget him. Your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, 
me if you got the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client. You forgot what the detective looked like, right? Yes. It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about test her testimony as well. Well, she is right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. Eh, still, we're gonna press harder. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Actually, yeah, that's a good question. How did you know about this detail? Unless we discussed this before, in any case, huh? Well, he can tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. And that's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Yeah, you know, I'm questioning this. How does she know about this? Why, well, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He is clearly a bitter man. Nah, I don't know, I... I don't think we even mentioned, um... The white scarf and all that and when we were cross-examining Dahlia, right? Only when we were cross-examining Gamshu, maybe. Hmm. I mean, if this were a place for us to contradict her, it would be this, about the contents of the, of the note, and the fact that... Dahlia knows about the white scarf and all that. That would be... That would be something we can contradict her on. Like, to further empower the theory that she was there and that she killed Val Valerie. Hmm. This is bad. Mr. Falls' reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's bad not to poke too deep. We tried it with that last statement. Yeah, you know what? Let's, uh, let's add it to the testimony. Yana, what the witness said just now was tremendously important. I like it added to the I like it added to the official testimony. And the prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. And the testimony helps to further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's not why. I... Enough. Witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. I mean, if I am wrong on this, then yeah, it kind of helps the prosecution on this one. <laughs> so we are really fretting on thin ice here. I guess how lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. What do you mean by lucky? Um, it's February now. Everyone is wearing scarves. Actually, no, oh, hold on a second. I mean, besides her knowing about the contents of uh, the note for sure, it's not a white scarf. We found a blue one, so, hmm. If I had accidentally worn a white scarf like you said... Then you yourself might have been killed. Hmm. That would have been a terrible loss for this world. <laughs> you look like you pressed too hard this time, kid. M Mr. Mondo. Keep looking around you, and you're going to lose sight of the finish line. Justice is blind. But she is not deaf. Sometimes you have to know, no, not to talk. Hmm. I can't be a poor girl. I just think that the is a horrible, terrible monster. You knew about that instant. But weren't you out of the country until the year before last? Well, I saw a report about the escaped convict on the news. They had an in-depth report about this whole about his whole history. So you were still living abroad five years ago, is that right? Yes. Yeah, surely. I can't let her get away with these lies. Listen, she's neck deep in this whole thing. Somehow you're just going to have to get her to show the court her true self. Hmm. But, okay, going back to what I was discussing before, about, um... About the white scarf. How is it that you know that, uh, uh, that uh, for identification, he needed a white scarf, Dahlia Halford? Maybe a Foster. Especially since the one that was worn by the quote-unquote victim and all that, 
was actually blue as well. So what do you have to say about that? Objection. Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Oh, we're talking about this scarf right here, right? You know, it's pretty interesting that at this point in time, we still have black and white photographs over here. Because if it were color and all that, it surely would have helped us in identifying that it was blue or white or something like that. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is the fact that, he, that she knew about the scarf. Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. Especially, like, after 2010 and all that. I mean, Jesus. Got it, no. Just don't mess up. I mean, we have flip phones at this point. I mean, Jesus. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I was wearing a white scarf. Uh, right? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. It was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Objection! Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yeah. I mean, she confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. And it certainly looks blue. And yet she's talking about the white scarf? What the hell? Yes, but... What's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but... There's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is... Well... It is because of the note. It says right over here... To wear white scarf identification. That's how she knew about the white scarf thing in the first place. Witness. Have you ever seen this note? No? I... Um, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Hmm. I wonder about that. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Falls' instructions to the victim regarding their meaning. It says, wear white scarf identification. White scarf. Arr! Witness, you knew what this note said. Yeah. And the fact that this note talked about the white scarf and that you mentioned white scarf seems like too much of a coincidence, doesn't it? Miss Melissa Foster. And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. <laughs> well, Miss Foster. Order, order, order! Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Tay Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Barry Hawthorne, is another, for sure. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more person? Mm, that's right. A person that no one would have suspected. Can you figure that out, kid? Yep. The first person that knew the contents of the note was... The person that knew about the contents of the note. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Dahlia Halfor, Valerie's younger sister. Victim of the kidnap slash murder. Fell from the bitch. Nobody found. And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I have never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her name, right there. Yeah, yeah I mentioned her name. What's this? So is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne? I mean... Eh. I guess the judge wouldn't know, maybe, I guess. I mean, it's not like he presided over every single K-9 
case in Japan of Fornia. I mean, that's what I thought of our good old judge, our, our original judge and all that, but no, apparently we have more judges, like this guy. So, uh, I guess he wouldn't know about the case five years ago. Unless he said before that he knew. In which case, you don't remember that detail about the victim being Dahlia Hawthorne? Canadian judge? Huh. Miss Fate must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. D the dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Yeah, how about that, Edgeworth? How about I offer you like an updated autopsy report about the victim's death? The victim was actually not dead that time. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped. And killed by Terry Fox. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago, when she fell off Dusky Bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. Yeah. Um, people, I mean, people are gonna assume that those who fall in the river and are never found are actually dead, but eh, there's actually another different possibility. Maybe, maybe the person that fell off the bridge actually ran away. Nobody would find her. At that point. However, her corpse was never found. Objection! She was declared legally dead five years ago. Yeah, well, you know, declaring something legally doesn't really have that much power in this sort of situation, Edward. As far as the law is discerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. Oh, look at you, using the law in your in your favor, Edward, eh? But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Yeah? Here we're talking about facts, Edward. Straight up absolute truth, yo! Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old, five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. And if we are to look at Melissa Foster over here, how old are you, Melissa Foster? Oh, you're gonna keep that a secret as well? <laughs> Why would you keep your age a secret at this point? I mean, it was suspicious enough that you would keep your, like, the country that you were in a secret, but your age as well? I mean, it could also be a coincidence, but it could also be something to empower our theory even more that you were the one that killed Fairy Hawthorne. Melissa Foster. I believe that's the same age you are. Uh, even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying. But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Wh what? Huh? Nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a free alarm fire. Unless you can tie all the loose ends together. You're nothing but a hit and run as artist. I... I understand. If I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Okay, order, order, order in the court! Now is my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth score. Mm. Witness, just who are you anyway? I... I'm... I didn't think it'd come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, Witness. Yes, I understand. What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Yeah, I have an admission to make. An admission? I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. Y you don't... You don't mean... Eh? Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What? What did he say? Edgeworth! Huh. He looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. Oh. You knew from the beginning, did Edgeworth? As expected. From the person that was once trained by Manfred. 
It's worse! No way! But then why? If Anne revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Halford. But... but... I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well. But, well, as you can see... But why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? And you, Edgeworth, you have some explaining to do over here. You said that she was Melissa Foster. You basically lied to the court! It has nothing to do with the current case. But then you... She was merely an accidental witness to her crime. Addiction. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she'd been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Objection. Really, Miss Faye, I must say, your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you? Like who? Look who's talking! Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Mm. But even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorn lost something much more precious. Her big sister. This fate must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? what? I'm inclined to agree with the persecutor's logic. Oh, come on. Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What personal reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see... Well, I can think of one. I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Eh, no idea. We're gonna, we're gonna figure out the motive, motive soon enough. I, I can think of at least one motive for her doing that. Huh. I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Ah, uh, th th that wasn't me. It was this guy. Th th this crazy coffee addict. <laughs> yeah, look at him. Look at this crazy coffee addict. That knows and drinks every single type of coffee in the world. With his beautiful eyes and beautiful hair and and that deep sexy voice that he has. <laughs>